Hello everyone, thank you for joining our session today. This is intended to explain a few basic things, how this uh, exam is taken, some key points, some basic points to enable people to attempt the exam and get the best out of it. My name is Jose Andres Mikhailidis. I'm teaching this SciSec Advanced Examination module. For the past two years, our results uh, proved to be very good. We have a specific method of attending this exam, and this is mainly based on uh, trial and error, on trying to do the test through our online tool and then read the theory. Just an introduction of what is a SciSec examination. This is the exam introduced by SciSec for those who wish to provide investment services and would like to be employed by CIFs, Cyprus investment firms, banks, management companies, and investment companies of variable capital. So in other words, this is uh, funds. So the SISEC requires us to pass the advanced examination for certain aspects of investment firms, especially in Forex industry, then basic examination is required. A few basic uh, things of how we can enroll in the examination. If someone wants to enroll in SISEC examination, you need to go through the official site of SISEC. So this is home. Uh, you can go to certifications and seminars. So you, you choose certifications and then you can subscribe to the examinations. And then you see for exam registrations that there are three examinations provided by SISEC. The examinations are basic, advanced, and AML. Today we are going to talk about the advanced, but with our website, we cover also basic and AML with the same logic. The advanced examination, uh, when you choose it, you can see a calendar uh, published in the website and you see that uh, all these dates are fully booked till 18th of August and then you can go in September and you see that some of these um, dates are fully covered as well. So we see that there is a lot of traction in the last few months regarding these exams. If we choose, for example, to roll in on the first, then you need to uh, you need to write everything here. You need whenever you don't have something, you need to have not applicable in the specific field, so that you are allowed to proceed. You have your email. If you don't work currently in a company, you need to have not applicable there. The same for the license number. Uh, on the preferred language, you need to think about which language you can attempt the exam, either English or Greek. We propose always to have this exam in English because we have uh, all the question bank of our, of our website in English and because we see that uh, there is a lot of traction coming from other countries and we don't want to limit our audience. Like if you if we want to be working in this industry, the English language is a preferable one. And then you need to proceed. And you see that uh, 300 euros need to be paid for you to enroll for the exam. So this is how you roll in. And then a couple of days afterwards, SISEC will send you the exact date of this exam. Okay. An example of SISEC email is like this one. So that was mine when I attempted lately the AML examination. So you get an email like this where you can download the, hand, the workbook, the handbook of the examination material. And uh, you can see also a tutorial that we are going to go through in a while. And then you see all the examination data, which is your exam date probably the one you have chosen what time it starts so you need to be present for me it was 10 o'clock my username 
and uh, the examination that I'm going to take, the language of my exam, and the examination center details. Just to tell you here that you need to be 20 minutes in advance prior to the examination because the, there is a parking limitation there. It's not freely, freely let's say, entered. So you need to go, you need to cater for some time in advance so that when you go to the exam, you are calm and you are focused for the exam only. Now, questions that people ask me, what is my recommended approach to pass the exam? And my recommended approach is basically to read the material and attempt each chapter test. So to give you an example, so here, it's my website. What I recommend people is to, for example, we have the advanced examination. You read through chapter one, then you need to go and do chapter one specific tests. Okay, you, you go through this uh, test. When you feel comfortable, you go to chapter two. Let me go to the next question and we're going to see an example of how my test are shown. So the next question is, what is my recommended practice? Again, it's like a trial and error. I prefer, I recommend my students to go and study the material, do the tests, go back, find their errors, and again, do the test, and again and again. For, e for each chapter, I recommend that this loop has to be done for 10 times. If I, if I am experienced, what is the use of these uh, tests? The, the workbook of SISEC is comprised of 14 different chapters that are extracts from the law. So even though you are an experienced professional, you need to study the specific material for the examination. And you need to attempt the specific exam questions. If you don't do, yes, you can pass, but we recommend the approach of trial and error on the examination tool so that you can see some questions and try yourself so you don't see them first time in the examination. If I'm not experienced, do I have chances to pass? Of course, yes, we have so many students, most of our students, I will say, they are not experienced or they are at the edge of their career and they want to change career and they see that FX or funds are the new trend uh, for their career to go on smoothly and to progress. So what we say is that, yes, you can pass examination compared to an experienced person. You are going to find it harder, but it is possible. And we saw results and you see in our Facebook page that we got from inexperienced persons, we got marks like 87 or 90. But these people devoted a lot of time in studying and testing themselves on the online tool. Do you have online courses? Yes, we do have occasionally. Currently, we are running a course for advanced. And from September onwards, we are going to have the full range of uh, courses for advanced and for AML. What is the size examination passing rate? In general, AML, we see that we have 100% passing rate. For advanced, we have about 90%, something like that. But I, I always answer that it doesn't matter what is the passing rate for everybody else. It only depends on you and how devoted you are in studying the material and pass. How can I register? We, we examine that. So let's see what other questions I usually get. And, and about the multi access coupon that we are going to speak at the end of the presentation. So an example of how the examination software looks like. In the advanced examination, there are 70 questions that you will be called to attempt, okay? With a 70% passing rate. It's not 50%, it's 70%. A typical question look like this. So there is a question and four possible answers, okay? In the exam uh, tool, you will see that you can choose one of these answers and then you can press next and proceed to the next one. 
you can also use the flag so that if you are not really sure whether you are correct or not, then it is preferable to use the flag here so that at the end of the first run that you are doing, you attempt only the questions that need to be reviewed. On the screen, you will also have a clock. And this is very important because before the exam, you need to learn how to handle your time so that you have experience and not be anxious and eager to finish. So you need to understand that time is enough. If you study it enough, you will have time for three times to read the questions and attempt them. At the top here, you will see that this is with a hyperlink, question one of 17. So at any time, at any point in time during the exam, you can press question one of 70 here, and you will see a list of all the questions that are in your specific exams. So here you will see whether you flag the question or if this is a normal question that you will need to attempt. The next thing, I would like you to know is that every time you finish and you answer the exam, you can press next or you can press submit all. When you press submit all, it means that you end the examination. So you need to be careful when you press this button because uh, if you are not ready, you may lose the exam itself. And then at the end, you will have a pass or a fail score with the score here to be shown. Okay, preferably for us to be pass. Now, what is the syllabus comprised of? So when you enroll, you will receive a book like this one, okay, that you will need to download. And this is the syllabus of SciSec with all the material that you will be examined upon. So this book can be edited and you can control find anything in there when you have questions during your study. This book comprises of these four, 14 chapters, all of them part of uh, the legislation under SISEC that SISEC regulates. So you can see that there are 14 chapters. First, we are talking about MIFID, the protection of investors and all the requirements to uh, register a regulated uh, investment firm. Then we proceed with funds, with usage funds, and the usual traditional funds that deal with shares and liquid assets. In, at chapter five, we speak about alternative investment funds, which is the trend in Cyprus currently. Chapter six speaks about banks, and the connection of Cyprus Central Bank with uh, SISEC and how each uh, competent authority intervenes to each other. And then we are talking a lot, a lot about AML. And then we're, we have three chapters specific to Cyprus investment firms and their reporting requirements. And then we are talking about traditional aspects of them uh, legislation, recovery and resolution laws. Uh, for the lawyers, this is um, relatively easy to understand. For the rest of us, it's like when a SIF is failing or when it is closing down, what is the procedure and who does what. Then at chapter 12, we talk about prospectus for shares that, uh, that go out to public to be sold before they float. We are talking about the transparency requirements, which is the reporting. And then a few things about insider dealing and market manipulation, which is a very sensitive matter when you have instruments out in the market. Then you will see at the right hand side that there are weightings. So you see from here that chapter two, three, and nine, there are eight questions each. So these are the most important and with the more waiting chapters. And we have a lot of questions to cover them in our question bank. The other chapters that are very important for the examiner 
a chapter four and five for the fans, and chapter eleven and seven. Okay, with four, with five questions. Then with four marks we have chapter one, eight, and ten. Okay, so all these are the most difficult uh, chapters. What we recommend our students to do is to take all the easy, all the small chapters and learn them really well. Because you will see that chapter 1, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are the most easy chapters, smaller chapters, and you can attempt and learn all the exam points and you can get a really good score without even touching two, three, and nine. Okay, so if you if you see in the exam structure, you will see that all of these questions carry a specific weighting. If you get these marks, you are far better off to pass the exam with many, many more chances. Here is a table to understand the differences from the basic examination. So you will see that the basic exam is a bit more than the half of the chapters, okay? With a different weighting, but more or less basic is a, just a part of the advanced examination. Also worth noticing is that the basic examination doesn't consider easy chapters for advanced examination. So you will see that chapter six, uh, nine, 11, 12, 13 are relatively easy chapters. So we recommend to our students to attempt advanced examination to give them the chance to attempt easy chapters as well and get these marks out of the examination. Then our recommended practice, it's this one. So what we say is that get the book from the examiner, read each chapter individually, attempt multiple choices, read again, see your mistakes, understand why you did the mistake, read again, do your mistakes, understand why you did it, do more multiple choice tests, and then read again and again and again. And do that several times for each chapter so that you can be sure that you know all the material and that you will pass. In my question bank, I have now more than 1,200 questions to cover all aspects of the book. I have 350 exam standard questions that are coming either through exit interviews or with the, our understanding with the examiners and uh, when we speak with our students when they get out of the exam. And then let me show you how I structure the website for your best benefit. So if I go again to my website, you will see that I have all the chapters one by one, except for 10, 11, 12, 13, who are really small chapters. And we don't have a lot of questions in the question bank. So we have them together. And then I have the advanced mock exam certificate, which is 70 questions. I have a small mock exam, which is 28 questions with two questions uh, for each chapter. Forgot to tell you that the advanced certificate mock exam is according to the weighting we saw in, uh, in the example given by the examiner. So the advanced mock exam is structured like this. Chapter one has four questions, chapter two, eight, chapter three, eight, chapter four, uh, six, six, etc., and go on and go on. So this is the way we structure advanced examination mock test. We saw the need to have a small mock exam so that you can practice before the examination and keep you up to date. Even let's say if you, if you have the exam in front of you, uh, let's say for many weeks. So it's a recommended practice to use this mock test so that you keep pace if you already cover the whole material. And then we have the flagship test, which is the new exam points, 
Well, we have 350 almost questions, all of them coming from exit interviews from the exam. So these are the exam standard questions, which are also found in these two mock tests. So in terms of difficulty, I would say that you need to start with the chapters, chapter specific tests. Then you go to the small mock test where you have two questions per chapter and where we have blended the exam points plus the easy questions. And then you need to attempt several times the new exam points, which are also given in the other uh, mocks. And before the exam, a few days, attempt the exam standard mock exam, which is a, a mixture of very difficult questions and easy questions. And let me give you an example of how a test can be so that you have the visibility. What is the, what is my website and how you can use it? So basically when you buy the test, you can, you can buy it from here. Like this is a QR site and you can buy it. And then when you fill in all the details, you receive an email like this one. At this point, we had the system send me one link and a specific password. So for this, for this test, I can use this link and this password for three attempts. Okay, for each test, there are different attempts according to their difficulty and to the price. So for this one, you can have three attempts with this link. So when I press the link, we see we see this, this screen open and Then I need to have this specific password in, and then we start. And you will see here that you will see one question here, for example, and you have question one of 28, like you are going to see in the exam one of 70. You will, you will have the clock running out of time. You see your progress, okay. You see the chance for mark for review, which is similar to the flag in the exam. So I choose, I choose one answer. If I don't know, I mark for review and I press next. The same, the same, the same. Let's say I do it randomly and I press next. I choose random answers. So here you will see uh, two questions from each of the 14 chapters, 28 questions. At the end, if you press mark for review, it will reveal all the questions that are marked. Submit my answers. I have the chance to review what I marked for review or for what I didn't answer. If I want to see more questions from my attempt, I can see them. And then I press submit button to see my result. And here, Mr. Costandinos scored one out of 28. Okay, and then I get a report of what I did wrong for each chapter. So I know where to concentrate and where I need more kel or more reading. And then if I go down, I see that there is a correct answer with what was my mistake. So this is an example of how our tests look like. So these are exam questions. Okay, so let's say you buy this test. You are going to receive a similar link to the previous one. Uh, let me show you. So for each test is a different set of questions. This pulls questions from, from the back end, from the question bank, and this is randomly selected. I cannot control what you see. I just feed the software with questions. So I have about 1,200 
uh, questions, which means 1,200 questions. And, and these are divided for each chapter. So I say that in the system, I say that for this small mock, for example, I talk to the software, give two questions, two random questions from each chapter every time. Okay, so if Stella attempts this um, test, you will see three different tests. It's not going to be the same. Okay. 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 The same with uh, with this uh, new exam point. This is a different question bank, only with exam questions. Okay, so you can have with this price, you can have five uh, different tests coming from the exam directly, okay? And as you see, I updated this two weeks ago, which was like um, with about 30 more questions that we got in the last couple of months. So this is quite good exam tool. This one here. How many times yep. are we allowed to use, the, uh, to repeat that? Um... If, you, if you are buying it one by one, this one is five. It says here, five tests of 24 questions. Okay. This is this is very targeted, very specific. So this one is a really good tool. And this is the best selling. Yep. So I think I answered Alexander's question. Any other? But I would recommend not go to the last, uh, to these new exam points first. First, you need to go step by step to have more chances to pass. I would say that you have you need to go through chapter one, chapter two, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, one by one, and then you can uh, find, let's say, uh, an easier attempt at the end. So, uh, thank you very much for joining me. It was nice to see you. I hope that I help you. And if you do, if you have any other question. You can always send me a message either uh, through the um, website email or through Facebook. Okay. Thank you very much.